Go ahead. Are we all set? Uh, we'll get this meeting going. Um, will you please uh, move your hands, turn off your cell phone, please, and let's uh, have a moment of silence. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll call this uh, RV meeting, the annual meeting. This is uh, the first meeting of the new um, RV uh, compound. Um, Right now, um, we, the compound was disbanded back in. Let me get my glasses. Here. Was disbanded in January 20, uh, 21. Now they just reestablished a new committee as of October 6, 21, uh, as a standing committee. I have been picked as the president, chairman of the compound. My name is Gil Lento. And my committee is, I have Greg as a co-chair. We have Jim Schneider over there as a treasurer. We have Marge over here that keeps us in strength and everything going on. Marge Roloff, and she's the secretary. And Jerry, uh, Jerry's our lazy on to the, the board. I'm going to go over some information quickly before we get started. Um, I would appreciate it if everybody would hold their questions and discussions to the end. We'll have an a, a open discussion to everybody. And we need to use the mic uh, because we are on camera. And uh, this way, so everybody got anything you want to say, you're welcome to it, but you've got to go up to the podium. I would like you to uh, give us your name and your site number. Uh, one thing that's important that we're uh, Doing here is the introduction of the committee members we already have. Uh, the RV responsible and donations. Now, I don't know if everybody's seen the news and views. Last month I put a, a thing in there about the donations and how the donations work. Uh, Treasurer will go over that later um, on how our donations are being used and how much electricity costs and all that stuff. He'll, he'll go over on his uh, agenda. Now, one thing I want to go over is the committee uh, uh, responsibilities. Uh, a lot of people say, what's the committee doing? Uh, what's their responsibility? Well, the committee of the RV compound is a standing committee exercising some authority for the uh, board of directors, as given to it by the board of directors. The board members are to, uh, required to be appointed by the directors to serve on the committee, which they have done with me. Uh, I'm the only one that they uh, pass, and then we form our own committee. After that, uh, they said we're going to conduct a meeting every year uh, of all the side committee uh, spaces. He's uh, by Jerry 31st of every year. Shall oversee the RV compound in coordinates with the new rules or regulations. Uh, when they formed the new committee, we ended up with new rules, revised rules and regulations. And the SOPs have changed also. So this is a brand new committee. This is our first annual meeting that we have. Um, and we're uh, started a new waiting list. The waiting list is maintained at the office. Uh, the general manager is actually is the last person that we deal with. Uh, when we assign a, a site, you can uh, approach me or approach Jerry, and then we have to go through the process. The process is that you go down to the office with your registration and fill out the sheet that's uh, required of you that's there down there. This is the new sheet. It shows that you have uh, your phone number, your email address, your cell number, and also an emergency contact in case something happens to your unit we can't get a hold of you, we'd like to 
another phone number so we can get hold of you. Um, if we have a fire, or we have we had a situation on there where the gas was leaking out of this gentleman's trailer. His uh, tanks were on. There was no way of getting hold of them. So uh, this is what we need to have for the emergency contact. So overall, this is a, a, I don't know if you guys have seen this. This is a new, uh, it's not new, it's just been revised. So the, they keep it on file at the office. Now the office uh, uh, will maintain a registration, but then the, you people, and it says here, like the walk walk through on the February on night at 10 a.m. We're going to do a walk through, consist of a checkup, an updated registration, vehicle conditions, and all. Of all units of the compound needs an updated plate, sticker, and decal affixed to their unit. Now, that exception of a two-wheel doll tow dolly do not need a plate unless the state of reg registration requires it. The tow dolly will be stored on the same lot as a towing vehicle. So as long as you're still, you know, you're towing, uh, that's what we did now, is keep them all in the same lot. If you don't have room enough to accommodate that, we will try to assign you a site where you can put both units on it. Now, it's your responsibility as an owner to maintain the plates and the stickers. To make sure the stickers tell you when the day expires. And the decals, not the office. This is the requirement of everybody here to make sure that you have your plate and your registration is on there. Uh, thank you, I'm George. Thank you, Mark. Right down here, sir. So, I greatly appreciate your attention on that because we have quite a few people that say, well, I turned my registration in. Yeah, you did. Where's your sticker? Well, they it's left there with this registration. It needs to be put on the unit. Because when we do the walkthrough, all we see is expired. And then what we do is after we have to check to make sure that your registration is there. But if the sticker's not there, it's not our responsibility to have it there. So that's why we need to make sure that everybody knows that their sticker is on there up to date. And if for some reason it's expired and we know about it, there's 45 days to make sure that you don't get a letter or whatever for the time that it expires. Most of the time, uh, Carol will send you a letter saying, okay, this is what happens. Now, Carol's been doing very well with this. Uh, we, as a board, uh, we work together to make sure that these things are being done. Uh, everybody said, Gil, this person, that, that, whatever. And I go to the meeting with Carol and with Jerry once a week. And we go over these uh, problems, uh, situations, or whatever we need to correct. So right now, I see that, uh, that we as a board have been trying to maintain uh, the place. We're trying to keep it clean, organized, secured, and safety. Now we have new cameras put in there. And we also have the lights in there, and we're doing our best to make sure everybody is where they need to be. If for some reason we got a few that are too big for their lot, we're trying to relocate them and try to make the, the place more serviceable for everybody. Uh, if you have a problem with your lot and you say, hey, get a lot. I don't have enough room, we'll make you room. We'll get you somewhere where we can get some room. Uh, this has been working pretty good so far. Um, overall, that's about all the information I'm going to give you at this time. Uh, the assignment of the sites, one thing is, you can look at a site and say, well, gee, I saw a small trailer on that site. It's been there about four months. Well, yeah, the motorhome's gone. There's a motorhome that goes on there. I'm glad that you remind us of it, and we check it out, and then we make sure it's all set. But you've got all these sites that are open. Well, it's like anybody. You have a site, and you move, uh, you take your unit and go away. You don't want me putting somebody else on your site while you're away. So that's why once you're assigned a site, we make sure it's maintained properly, make sure it's clean, and make sure the grass is cut and all this stuff. But in the same token, we preserve your site for you. 
And the other thing that's going to preserve your site, make sure your registration is up to, up to date. That is the important thing. And follow the rules and regulations. They're revised, so please take your time and look at them again because we simplified a lot of them, make them so they're not uh, redundant. In other words, people uh, look at it and say, well, I saw that in, in uh, two sections. So we concise them down to where we're on two pages now, and we're saying the same thing. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask everybody that's on the board if they have a comment, and then after that, I'm going to open this up to anybody that wants to make a comment, a discussion about everything, or anything else. Jerry, you got anything you want to say? No, no. Greg? I, uh, I would like to say that when he mentioned maintaining our lot, uh, I have seen several that have not been trimmed in the uh, maintenance department to not trim around it because they don't, they're not being taken care of or paid for. So I think it you know, should be our responsibility to trim around our units, either with a weed whacker or some other way. And I think on the, as we come into compound, there should, I think there should be a sign there that says, don't forget to maintain and trim your lot. And that's what I think we should be doing, and that's up to our committee to decide that. Yeah, we do pay. Uh, we do pay the public works two fifty a year to mow the grass. Yeah, yeah the but they can't get near. No, they can't trim. No. Jim, you want to be next? I guess so. Good morning. Uh, I'm losing my voice slowly but surely here, so <clears throat> I'll go fast if I can. The beginning balance on one one twenty one was $11,479.73. Uh, we paid for items purchased uh, from Target, Lowe's, 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 it, it, the whole thing. If you want me to read the prices, I can. Uh, Myers got a, a disc she bought, she got compensated for it. We bought 150 pounds worth of asphalt for the roadway. Marjorie Olaf bought some more stuff for the compound. Home Depot, we bought boxes, gang boxes to fix stuff. Um, and we bought a hardware drive and a cam two pack, whatever that is, I'm lost, I don't know. But anyhow, then we have a lot of donations. Uh, and the last we paid, 1522 electricity for the compound, $750 a year. Mowing for the compound, $250 a year. And as soon as I find my sheet, I will let you know it's going up for the next year. Our mowing for the year 2022 will be increased to $825. I mean, I'm sorry, electric will $825 a year. Mowing went up to $275 a year. That is something we have to pay, the donations cover it. I've had a lot of people ask, well, I, you know, who pays for the electric? And one of the meetings that I couldn't make, Somebody got up and complained that he felt it wasn't fair for the community to have to pay for the electric. And Gil got up and straightened him out real fast, which is a good thing he did because we need to, rumors like that don't help us any. Everybody says, well, I'm paying for it, I don't have anything in there. All of it's paid for, the people you sit here, you donate, it goes into our account and we handle all the expenses that come up whether they're big, whether they're small, we take care of it and we have a good balance in there. The only thing I can ask is that we keep donating as much as we can, when you can, whatever, just so we can keep it up and keep that compound looking good. I've been on the committee and running that compound for over 20 years. And I started the, the deal with the donations so we could put all the new lights in and stuff. 
I have records for everything that was put in that compound from 1917, 18, and 19, and 20, and 21. I can prove everything that we, we have spent in there. And as far as like the lights, if there's any more or anybody thinks if they go down there at night and they look and see a light out, please call the security office or call me or call Gil and say there's a pole. The light isn't on, so we can go down and check it out the next night and find out where it is, get the number off it, and have the electric company come in and change the lights over if the light is burned out. That's the only way we know. Uh, we can't get in there during the night unless security lets us in, so. Uh, that's about all I have for you right now. I can answer questions later on when we uh, have the question period. Thank you. One thing about that we need to understand that we, uh, Jerry, myself, and uh, and the general manager, and Billy from the from the public works, is uh, we agreed that 10 percent increase every year from now on. And that's why uh, why we projected eight and a quarter for electricity next year, and 275 for the moment. The other thing is uh, this going to continue on. And by, because we don't have a direct meter to those, there's three meters there, but they, they're not designated for our lights. So this is why, where we got this money from. Um, it used to be back in 18, we paid 695 for electricity. So we went from there and we added 10% a year and that's how we ended up with the percentage that we're doing. Um, so, uh, that's all I'm going to say to that. Jerry, I mean, George, you can Yeah, I'm George Doolong from, uh, yeah, from Brookridge here. Yeah. But uh, uh, on that uh, cleaning around the uh, RVs, don't, whatever you do, don't spray any of that Roundup because you'll end up with sugar sand. I used to work for Public Works and used to work around the park here for 10 years. And uh, that was one thing that we used to tell them, and I used to have to mow the all around the RVs, but uh, when they spray the Roundup, you end up with the sugar sand and then you just sink. So just trim it with the weed whacker. Good morning. The only thing I would like to say is uh, please put your steps in, put your slides in, because when we have the walkthrough, you know, people don't trip over the steps and that kind of thing and get hurt. We greatly appreciate it. Okay, the meeting is open to discussion. Anybody got any answers, questions? Sir? Larry Schmitz, lot 172. Larry Schmitz, lot 172. The mowing, if everybody trims around their unit, uh, what is the public works mowing? The other excess grass? Yes. But isn't that an amenity to Rookridge, all the other mowings? Well, it's not true. Um, we've had that discussion over and over about the RV compound being an amenity and not an amenity. Um, the way that works is like Public Works does the mowing for people that's not here. Like you can take your lots, but uh, let's say that you have you have 250 or about 250 sites in there. There is sites in there that people don't, may not move their trailer or come to, like prime example is lot 72. Well, somebody has to mow his spot because it's the grass is grows in his spot but grows next door to the spot beside it and that kind of thing. So that is the reason. Well, if Brookridge took it over, then that would be considered an amenity and that means that you would have like a, a great example is you would have to go through the same thing that you went through the last few years with the whether it be I'm on the board or whatever it'd be like wanting to charge a fees for this and all that and that's not like lock rent or whatever you call it so no it's not an amenity because they do the common areas there, they do the street, the sides of the street, as well as around the RVs. And of course, you got to remember, some people have not came down for 
what, a year, year and a half, somebody's got to mow their spots because of COVID. So that's, that's the reason. Okay. I have one more question. Uh, it, it's always been uh, whenever you get have your birthday, you get a new registration slip through your unit. Right. And we always turned it into Betty Hines, who took care of it then. Do we still practice that whenever you have a birthday? You get a new registration slip uh, from the state. Do we turn it into the office? No, you have to put it on your trailer yourself. You what? If you get a registration, the decal and all that you're for your birthday or whatever, you have to put it on your trailer yourself. No, no, no. Oh, registration, yes. Registration, you do take it. took it to the office and she made a copy of it for the file. Yeah, right. Yeah, it still goes to the office and give it to Vivian and she gives it to Carol. So, yeah. Is that in with the rules and regulations? You know, like, yes. Read them. It's in there. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of trailers, RVs that don't show up, and they mow all that whole area. But it's just that because some RVs have been hit. They go up with the mower. We used to go up, and if they were sticking out, some every once in a while, the stairs would be sticking out. They got hit. So they want people to do their own trailers, just the trailer right around, because there's a lot of others. When trailers don't show up, sometimes it's four or five 25, 30 trailers, so they got clear sailing, but they get caught in little spots and they ended up with uh, damaging some, so it's better off taking care of your own. As far as that registration, you gotta present that to the office. Just make sure the decal goes on the plate. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's like anything. Oh, yeah. That should be protocol. Okay, sir. Sorry. Come here. I'm Ed Baines, is it on? Push it up, Ed. There you go. Is that better? Yeah, oh, yes. I'm Ed Baines, lot 68, I was in the RV compound for, I guess, two, three years with Jim back in 15, 16, 17. Uh, a couple questions. Stickers on the, on the license plate. Pennsylvania doesn't require stickers on your license plate. It's effective 2020. So I'm not going to get a new sticker. The one on there is 21 right now because I bought it for five years and it's expired. I renewed my registration in the office, but if you're going to go around the compound and check stickers, you're in trouble. Because well, we understand that. Okay. that. You there just kept pushing of... everybody to put stickers on their vehicles. I'm saying a lot of us don't have stickers. Well, well I guess I guess the plates in there 17. Yeah. Okay. They need to update that. Okay. But and the, the office is up to date, but the sticker on the decal on the boat on not the, up to date. They're not up to date as long yeah. as you know that. We know that. Okay. We've been around a little bit. Okay. Is that Another thing too sheets? is, huh? Is that marked on your master sheets? Yeah. What's that? Right here. Yeah, the checkoff sheets. Right. One thing and another thing too is, we're not responsible for registration on your boat. The numbers on your boat, we're not responsible for those. But the trailer is what we're worried about. Okay. That's all I'm worried about. And then the other thing is, I heard Jim saying we've got $11,000. But that's over many years. That's not, that didn't happen in one year. Do you guys have any plans for that? One. And two, is that solely designated for RV compound? BCCO yes, cannot get that. That's right. And we're looking at uh, re servicing the, the roads in there so there's enough money in there. Okay. That's because what there's other projects that we we got to fix the fencing in the back, and that's going to be uh, taken care of. Uh, we got other projects that we got to take care of. Okay, so you're addressing all that kind of stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Yeah, I'm Chuck Reckle, and I'm from, I'm Chuck Reckle, and I'm from Michigan. You hear me now? Push it up. Push it up. There you go.
Y'all hear me? Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm Chuck Greco. I'm from Michigan. My lot is 123. When I got assigned that lot, there was an old car dolly on the back and sitting against the fence. Right. And they've been trying to remove this for three years and it still hasn't been removed. How do we go about getting it? I'm here right now. I'm only here four months out of the year. So all summer my lot sits empty. It could be towed away. Well, we're going to address that. That's part of the right, right upon here right. that we're looking at that. That's down on the down by the boat down there that uh, needs the attention. And that needs to come out of there. Right. And it's good. Uh, right now we don't I couldn't tell you who owned that because there's no plate on. So uh, we're going to follow up. Yeah, that, that dolly was sitting on the lot when I was assigned it. That dolly is buried in grass and everything. Right, exactly. I just want to make sure you know it's not mine. But my <laughs> unit's only there four months out of year. I'm from Michigan. Right, right. And my plate, there's no sticker. Michigan has permanent trailers. That's it's, right. It says permanent right now. So right, yeah. Yeah. But you have a registration on it, you have a plate on it, it says permit. There's permanent. other states that have permit. And, and the registration says that in the office still. Right. So there's yeah. no need to run up there every year. Because when I was assigned a lot, so you got to re-register every year. So, well, I got permanent planes. So. Right. So that's just my question. If there was some way I could work with somebody to get that out of there while I'm here. We'll, uh, we'll address that. Okay. Because <laughs> like I said, I'm here, I'm gone all summer. If somebody wants to pull it. To sell the chair, whatever. It's an old dolly, you know. It's going to have to go. I understand. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. All right. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Brenda McMahon, Lot 104. I just want to say thank you to all you guys for all your hard work. I see you out there. We're out there helping. Keep up the hard work. And if there's anything we can do, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, just a reminder. If y'all are out at the RV compound, like getting your trailer ripped up and that kind of thing. If you see somebody ride through that doesn't have one uh, or is not pulling one behind them or anything, they're probably looking for a, to see how many empty spots we have, that kind of thing. If they stop and ask you, please tell them that they have to check with the office first. Because we found that there's some trailers in there that we found that people just stick in there. They don't go take the registration to the office or anything else. They just think that it's an open spot, they can put a trailer in. I mean, Gil's deal with that. Probably two or three like that, that at least have shown up and we've not known where they come from. So uh, just a reminder, if you see somebody, you see somebody that, that you don't recognize or they're not checking a, a, their RV, they're just riding through. Uh, let him know if you can. Let him know because he might bring one in there and just stick it the next day in the empty spot. Thank you. Is there any other questions or any other comments? Go ahead, sir. Mr. Wright. I can't remember my lot number. 192 or 194. I can't remember. And I was just there. <laughs> anyway, a couple things. Uh, first of all, I just want to say again, uh, what a great job the committee, the, the board, everybody's done uh, from, from Jerry down or up or sideways um, with, with the lot, with the, with the compound. It's, it makes more sense. It looks better. It's neater. Uh, I'm glad something was said about using Roundup. I like Roundup, <laughs> but it wouldn't be a good idea there, and I, I'm familiar with the sand, and it's like, you know, that makes sense? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, not crazy about weed whacking. I suppose I'll leather up before I go weed whacking, <laughs> but uh, I agree that it, it shouldn't be that much for each individual to get in there and take care of your little spots, and maybe don't be afraid to eat a little of your neighbors. Thank you. 
Uh, hit a little of your neighbors, yeah, and that would be a, a good one. As far as the money, I'd like to uh, see the money grow even more because I'm sure that there are projects that need to be done. And like we saw with the lights and the mowing, I don't, I don't have a problem with public work for Pete's sake. Those guys do a great job, in my opinion, and, and uh, they're certainly worth that money. Uh, I had a final thing to say, but I forgot what it was, so you're welcome. What's your George? Uh, Bill Riley. Yes. Yeah. Bill Riley. Riley, as in life of. Bill, like the front part of a duck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I got to admit, uh, the Public Works has worked with us very well. One thing that we've been doing, I don't know if you people realize, uh, they used to have concrete blocks where people would pack under their wheels and they were this high above the ground. Um, we can put anything under our wheels like patio blocks. We can put uh, gravel under our uh, wheels. As long as they're level with the ground. We don't want anything above it. We remove some blocks of concrete. You can look at the public works. I bet those things weighed a, th a ton a piece. We had a heck of a time to lift them out of there. But we're getting them out of there now. Uh, that was on lot 160. We got them out. We got one more lot that I got to get public works to help me get that piece of concrete out of there. And then our ground has got to be safe. Because that those blocks were so high that uh, Mr. Uh, well, I'm not going to tell you what his name is. He had his motor come by there and he could rip his tires because it was that high if he hit it. So that's why we took it out. So the public works has been working with us, and we pay them 275 for mowing, but they do a lot more than that. I remember the last thing I was going to mention. As far as uh, out-of-state plates, as we're doing the checkoff, my personal experience, it's like I'm looking for a Florida plate, I'm looking for the sticker, and sometimes I forget what year it is. But anyway, if there's no plate, that's the next thing we look for, is if it's a, is this a Florida trailer? Now, if it's a Florida plate and it's from 2017, that's probably expired or they just forgot to put the sticker on. But uh, the checkoff sheet gives us an awful lot of information in just a little bitty box. There's a lot of information there. Uh, maybe last month it was expired uh, or there's a notation in there. It's a Minnesota trailer. It's a Michigan trailer. Uh, let me think. Wisconsin is another one. They don't have plates on a, a smaller trailer. Anyway, uh, that, that uh, I call it a cheat sheet or checkoff sheet. Check -off very sheet. very informative for us, and it helps us go do the do the walkthrough, boom, boom, boom. Um, and that's, oh, and not to be a smart aleck, oh, I am a smart aleck. Uh, if you don't know whose dolly that is, and you want to know whose dolly that is, move it. <laughs> yeah. bit, or, you know, another suggestion maybe to, to discourage, I'm not going to say stop, but to discourage people from just parking their trailers in there because nobody else is using it, I should. Put a sign out front, assign lots only, assign spots only, and, and that way when it's missing, you'll find out who owns it, <laughs> and then you can explain to them it's assigned lots only, kind of like the sign. Yeah. So, all right, I think I'm done. Thank you. I have one more. Go ahead, sir. Larry Schmitz, 172. I've been here many, many years, and I've been helping Jim, and I've helped Gil in the past for walkthroughs. And I encourage everybody to make a donation, whatever you can per year. Uh, it does help, uh, and I thank Gil and Jerry and the rest of the committee for forming this now and making everything work again. And so uh, I will see you at the walkthrough whenever I can make it there. Thank you very much. Our next walkthrough is going to be February 9th at 10 a.m. Uh, anybody who would like to join us would be great. Uh, Usually I look at about six teams, which means two people per team. Uh, they work very well together. And I split this sheet up and uh, give you, uh, you know, one through 50, uh, one uh, 50 to 60 or whatever. And you folks just do those units. 
It may not be the same ones you did the year the we a month before, but it's very important. And once these uh, notations are on the end down here, uh, whatever you see, you might say, "Well, gee, uh, that's not important," but I'll put it down. What happens is after this, I get these sheets, I make a summary of it, and I have a meeting with Jerry and a meeting with Carol, and we go over it, and we go and make sure that we address these important. And if something that needs to be addressed more, I have a meeting with my committee at least once a month, and we designate what projects we need to do. Uh, we designate uh, whatever needs to be done. Right now we're doing lining, lining uh, where people line up, and with numbers, and we're gonna do the fencing, and get that done first, and then we'll concentrate on the roadway. The roadway is going to be expensive. That's why we're building up how much it's going to be for money. I mean, we can't just, a BPCO will help us a little bit, but they're not putting us on the, the repayment. That's our problem. So. You might want to mention uh, trying to lie. Yes, that, that's another thing we've got to work on. Some of our spots are too narrow, uh, especially on the west side. Uh, we're going to widen them out to at least 12 feet. Most people uh, right now, uh, those 10 foot spots are just too narrow. So uh, we do uh, concentrate the low trailers, the three by five landscaping trailers. We're putting them up in the corner. Because that corner, if you make uh, that corner over there is uh, a problem, for putting big units in there because uh, you don't have the room to maneuver. So we're putting the small landscapers in there. Uh, we used to put three or four trailers in there. Now we're putting in 16 small trailers in there. And those small trailers were on lots that were too big for them. So that's what we're doing. We're reusing the compound to be more user-friendly. One thing that folks I don't understand, our uh, background, I'm transportation background. I owned tractor trails for years and worked for that. He, he was a driver also these years. And my friend over here, he was a Boston, uh, we used to call him the lunch man. He used to do the lunch truck on the, down the Mystic Pier and all that. So we're pretty, we're pretty uh, familiar with how usage of land is and all this stuff. <laughs> And we're trying our best to do what we can. You're welcome to call me with any kind of comments that you have. Uh, anything you want, just give me a call. Give me an uh, I have my, uh, uh, I'll put down my, uh, my address on uh, my letter when we uh, do the letter. I'll give you my email address. You can email me if you like. Be, uh, be a little bit cautious about the language you use. <laughs> Why? <laughs> My ears are a little sensitive. Jimmy <laughs> yeah, might want to say go through you. Uh, Time to contact you and not Carol. Yeah, yeah. You can contact me, and most likely we'll we'll work with it. Then I'll I'll follow up with it where it goes. Any more comments? Anybody? You want to call it there? Okay, I'm looking down here at the rules and regulations, and one rule that got changed, you got to remind people if you see somebody riding through like that, look for a spot. Rule number E, where it says parking space and RV compound is issued on a first come, first serve basis. I remember that it used to say that it didn't say the park based based on unit size. That's, that's where we've changed it where everything's like based on unit size. That's why you'll see all the little trailers up around the corner at where the 40s are at and 50s and 60s. And um, we're trying to move all the bigger RVs to the middle and put the ones that have like multiple units on the left-hand side as you come in. I mean like in the big part. So um, that's one thing. If people ask you why there's so many empty spots or wanting to know about a particular spot, tell them that, the, that it's based on size. Make sure that, because I've told people over the last month 
that they have like a 15 foot RV and they just come, I mean a 25 foot or 30 footer come in, they want to spot and I say, no, you can't have it because it's like um, you got snowbirds that still have the spots. And the waiting list, I will tell you this, if somebody asks you about the waiting list, we are in March and April of last year now. So that's the waiting list. What we do have available that we're filling as much as possible is the 10 by 10 spots. We don't have any of the big ones. I think we've got like, uh, I think two came available yesterday or this morning and they're in the middle. So we'll get together on that and it'll be whoever's back in March or April is where that, that's come from. And then we got some people that have not took spots yet. We have one particular spot we gave out and we've never seen a trailer there yet. Yeah. So uh, we're looking at that. And then, let's see, the only, only else I, I can think of is try to put, if you move your trailer out, try to put the blocks that you chop the wheels with, make sure they're up against the post because if it's, a, if they have to, if Public Works mows that spot, and if it's sitting too high, they may not see it in the grass and may kick it out in somebody's RV. And I don't want no dent to be in nobody's RV. So, because uh, you know how mowing goes. So, uh, um, anyway, that's all I have right there. So, if you kind of got any other questions after, you want to see me privately about something, that's fine. One thing is that I, he brought up a good fact is uh, sometimes we'll see. Uh, uh, a spot that's been open, uh, 96 comes to, to mind. It's been open, uh, nobody's been on it for six, seven months. Well, I asked Carol, so would you please check on it? She checked on it and realized that the person been away that long and their spot is available to them. Uh, we do uh, do that. We check on spots that are available and ones that are not available. So I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate all the participation, and now I want to entertain an adjournment. Hold on. I got one more statement I'd like to make. Um, like I said, I've been here for a long time, and I was just looking on Section 2E. Um, if anybody has a boat and you're fishermen, do not, and I repeat, do not leave your poles and reels and tackle boxes and anything in there couple times we've had people break through the fence and they have stripped the boats of everything. Even the navigation equipment, the depth, depth finders and everything, they took everything out of the gentleman's boat. They never, we didn't know about it until he went and uncovered it to take it out. They went under the cover, took everything out under the cover. All the nuts and bolts were laying there but all the other stuff was gone, completely cleaned out. Just a word of warning. There are people who cut the fence. There are people who go over the fence, under the fence. Be careful with your personal property because you don't want to lose it to somebody like that. The other thing I'd like to say is I've been doing this for a long time and I keep looking at the donation sheets and I say God bless to all the people who donate. But I have one complaint. I would like to get my sheets together and make a list of all the people who from 1917, 18, and 19, and 20, and 21, who haven't contributed a dime, who are in there. And give it to Mr. Jerry and let him take care of it. That's not fair to you people who contribute money on your sheet, and there's people who have not given a dime, and I know quite a few of them myself. I've got all the records. Joe no more knows I've got the records. Jerry knows I've got him. I'm a pack rat. I keep stuff. In case somebody wants to know stuff about the lighting poles, etc., etc., I can tell you about it. I can show you the facts, figures, and everything. But it irks me that everybody on this list that contributes to get us up, and then I have people who I haven't seen a donation in three or four years. And it's discouraging. I just wish we could do something. I don't know. Maybe Jerry can help us out or something. I'd like to give people a warning. 
if you don't somehow donate even what's twenty dollars you go to mcdonald's you spend twenty dollars good lord if we can get another hundred people to give us twenty dollars that haven't given us nothing before we're going to build our money back up but if we can't get donations from them they expect the services to be there you expect them to be there pay for them like you people do here that's my comment for today i don't want to offend anybody but that's my personal opinion thank you I'm Rick Sapp, 108. I entirely object to this gentleman's opinion. We have not donated. We will make a donation. We apologize for not having done. We've been here a year and a half. But the donations are voluntary. Let's make a, let's make that clear. You will not make lists of people who have and have not donated and share that. That is entirely uh, that's entirely against the rules. If that's your personal opinion, I respect that. I've worked with you in the compound, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. If there's no other Just comments, make sure everybody gets the new rules. Yeah, everybody get the rules and regulations back there, the new revised ones. Uh, no, I need one. In the back. In the back. Sign in, please. Oh. In the back. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to entertain a motion for adjournment. I make a motion for adjournment. Any second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you next year. Thank you. Good <laughs> meeting.